Ordering your Audi A1 in Sportback form gets you a couple of extra doors and adds an even more premium feel to this, the market's classiest small car. Luxury makers often cut corners to drive down the cost of their smallest models, and it shows. Not Audi. In any form you choose, this A1 Sportback will always feel reassuringly expensive. The price tag might seem that way too, until you balance it against class-leading running costs that make this car surprisingly affordable to run. A model then that brings big car standards to the small car marketplace, particularly in this improved form where it's smarter, more efficient and better equipped. When it comes to building aspirational cars, there aren't too many companies that Audi can learn from, particularly when it comes to less expensive models. There's something very special in the way the German brand can turn what are sometimes fairly proletarian ingredients into something beautifully presented. Something like this, the much improved first generation A1 Sportback. This is the five-door version of an A1 model that, since its launch at the end of 2010, has brought a whole range of new attributes to the small car segment, many of them things this sector has never seen before. Standard Volkswagen Polo underpinnings have been finessed into something altogether more high-tech and sophisticated, the kind of result that's possible when, as a brand, you're prepared to spend over 2.5 billion euros a year in product development. And it's something of a trailblazer. This, after all, was the very first premium brand five-door super mini and creator of a little market niche that satisfies people who require a Fiesta or Corsa-class car but want a much nicer one. Customers who either aren't able or simply don't need to stretch up to larger, focus-sized premium compact hatches like the BMW 1 Series, the Mercedes A-Class and Audi's own A3. The A1 Sportback we're looking at here has been updated with more efficient engineering and extra technology and remains the least expensive way of bringing one of these badges onto your driveway while still preserving a modicum of practicality. Small but perfectly formed, it's perfect for downsizers and ideal for aspirational super mini owners. But of course there's a premium to pay over conventional small car rivals. Can it still be justified? Let's find out. You may, like us, have certain expectations when it comes to driving this car. After all, it's based on the Volkswagen Polo, isn't it? Which means it'll ride well and feel very competent, but really lack a bit of fizz. Not the sort of super mini you take out for a drive just for the fun of it. Sometimes, though, it's refreshing to be proven wrong. No, there isn't the go-kart chuckability you get from the start in a Mini, but it's a genuine surprise just how talented the chassis is once you start to press on a bit. And unlike a Mini, this Audi doesn't force its sporty pretensions on you when you simply aren't in the mood, when it's pouring down with rain, the road ahead's festooned with speed humps, and you just wish you were in something bigger and more comfortable. In an A1, you feel as if you are, this car offering an air of refinement and sophistication that's still unmatched in this class. There's no magic formula here, just sound basics from a very well-developed Polo platform. That's been matched to a sophisticated range of engines. I've been trying what is arguably the best all-round choice as part of this test, a 1.6-litre TDI diesel with power raised from 105 to 116 PS in this revised model. That's enough to see you to 62 miles per hour in 9.4 seconds en route to 124 miles an hour. This power plant is probably the one you'll look at first if you're an A1 buyer seeking to match parsimony with pace. But in this regard, there is another option. For much the same sort of money that you'd pay for a top S-Line spec 1.6 TDI model, your Audi Centre can also offer you the cleverest petrol version of this car, a 1.4 TFSI variant with COD or cylinder on demand technology. Here you really do get an advanced slice of Vorsprung Dirk Technik, thanks to an upgraded 150 PS engine that under low load can seamlessly switch to using only two of its four cylinders, so making possible the potential of nearly 60 miles per gallon combined cycle fuel economy. That's not something you'd expect from a car able to get to 62 miles per hour in just 7.8 seconds en route to 134 miles an hour. It'll further underline a preference for petrol power amongst A1 buyers which already see the two best-selling variants drink from the green pump. 
both use turbocharged TFSI engines, and the most interesting of the pair is the least expensive one-litre unit. Replacing the old four-cylinder 1.2, this is Audi's very first three-cylinder power plant, and it's a good one, with 95 PS on tap. That's enough for more performance than you expect from a car boasting a modest 160 newton meters of torque. You have to keep the unit spinning at over 1500 RPM to make meaningful progress, but as long as you do, it's a reasonably perky companion. 62 miles an hour is 11.1 seconds away from rest on the way to 116 miles an hour. And if you gun the engine like this, your progress will be accompanied by a brilliant raspy thrum that makes you feel like you're going a lot faster than you really are. The other mainstream option is another petrol 1.4, this one more conventional than its cylinder-on-demand stablemate, and putting out a more modest 125 PS output. That's good enough to see you to 62 miles an hour in just under 9 seconds, on the way to a top speed of just under 130 miles an hour. 1.4 litre A1s get a reasonably slick shifting 6-speed manual gearbox, but if you opt for either the 1 litre petrol or the 1.6 litre TDI diesel, you'll have to make do with only five ratios. For many potential owners, the difference is academic, as they'll be ticking the box for the optional seven-speed dual-clutch S-Tronic transmission, one of those automatic gearbox clever enough to select the next gear even before you've left the last one. You get the S-Tronic option across the A1 range, except on the variant you'd think would be most likely to have it, the priciest one. The flagship A1 status is occupied by the S1 Quattro hot hatch model, but this version couldn't cope with the extra 25 kilos that that trick transmission would have shoved over its nose. So its prodigious class-leading 231 PS output must be marshaled by a more conventional six-speed stick shifter. You'll certainly need to be pretty quick at grabbing for gears because this car will demolish the sprint to 62 miles an hour in under six seconds. That's about a second quicker than something comparable sized like a Ford Fiesta ST, a Peugeot 208 GTI or a Mini Cooper S and about half a second quicker than something larger like a Golf GTI. In the dry of course. In the wet, thanks to the S1's Quattro four-wheel drive system, none of the cars I've just mentioned would even see which way the Audi went. You don't need to stretch to the pricey S1 model though to get an A1 you can really enjoy behind the wheel. True, this Audi doesn't deliver the eager go-kart style feel you get from a Mini, but it's still a world removed from the unremarkable driving experience served up by this car's Volkswagen Polo cousin. Even a humbler variant like the one I'm trying here feels accurate and responsive, particularly if you've a version fitted with Audi's Drive Select system, operable via this dash-mounted button here. Via three settings, efficiency, auto and dynamic, this setup allows you to tweak throttle response, steering feel and on S-Tronic models, gear shift timings to suit the way you want to drive. Opt for the extra cost adjustable dampers and via these settings you can tailor the suspension setup to the road you're on too. If you are going to drive like this, one of the things you're likely to notice is just how sure-footed this little A1 feels powering out of sharp turns. It turns out there's a reason for this, a torque vectoring system that imperceptibly breaks your wheels on the inside of a curve. When power is applied, the excess torque then flows to the outer wheel, which helps to maximise traction and makes the car steer through the bend more precisely. What we'd counsel against is getting carried away by all this sporting potential when ordering your A1 with huge 17 or 18 inch wheels or even worse, stiff sport suspension. The latter being a feature that fortunately you can now deselect from the plusher sport and S-line trim levels. Over firm damping and huge alloys will both put paid to one of these car's biggest attributes, its ride quality. You especially notice this on highway journeys where the A1 reveals itself to be a far better long distance prospect than any super mini rival. You'd certainly prefer it to a mini. But of course you'll mainly be using this Audi around town where this car comes into its own. Whichever version you choose in an urban environment, the light controls, well-assisted steering, dinky dimensions, tight turning circle and decent all-round visibility mean it's simple to drive, simple to use and simple to park. The perfect shopping car indeed for someone who wants to leave something larger and more expensive tucked safely away at home in the garage.
This is exactly as you'd expect a miniature Audi to look. Yet the styling of this car also gives the A1 a bit of its own personality. It's more than merely a scaled down version of the larger A3. Forget all that retro stuff you'd find on a Mini or a Fiat 500. The Ingolstadt brand has no patience with any of that. This is all far more sophisticated, with a continuous, pronounced shoulder line that runs from the trademark single-frame front grille, then along the flanks before wrapping around the rear. The polo parentage certainly isn't obvious. The wheels set more widely apart, the body riding a little lower. It's all neat, confident and very classy, with the finished effect being especially smart if you order your car with a contrasting roof that's unique to this more versatile body style. In creating the sport back shape, it would have been easiest simply to cut a couple of rear doors into the existing three-door body style, but that wouldn't have been very Audi. So instead, the original A1 design was revisited from scratch, resulting in six millimetres more width and height for this sport back model, plus a B-pillar located 23 centimetres further back and a roof line that's 80 millimetres longer to facilitate headroom in the rear. As for the changes made to this improved version, well, you'd need to be very familiar indeed with the A1 model range to notice them. The enhancements mostly centre upon a front end featuring revisions to the air intakes and the fog lights, as well as revised bumpers with more powerful contours that make this car 19 millimetres longer than the original design. More overt are the updates made to the wider, more distinctive single-frame front grille that's flanked by restyled headlights now able to incorporate high-tech Xenon Plus technology. The subtly restyled tailgate lamps are another beautifully crafted part of this car. If Xenon headlights have been fitted, the tail lamps are made up of 54 super red LEDs, emitting an intense deep red colour. But of course, other drivers won't be able to see them at night when the hatch is raised. So when that's up, these extra lights on the backs of the C pillars illuminate for improved roadside safety. The loading lip is a comfortably low 66 centimetres, and once you get your stuff above it, you'll find a 270 litre boot that, a little disappointingly, is the same size whether you choose your A1 with three or five doors. That means it's not huge, but the space provided is par for the course in the five door super mini segment, and about the same as you get from a five door mini hatch. Plus, you can make very good use of the room on offer if you pay extra for an optional luggage package which features divided storage compartments under the loading floor to prevent your bottles of Coke scrambling your eggs on the way home. If you do need extra room and can fold down the split folding back seat, a process that doesn't require removal of the headrests, then up to 920 litres of space is available. It's the same in the three door variant. Time to move inside. Enter in through the long doors and you'll discover what you probably would have expected to find, the smartest cabin in the class. Now enhanced on most versions of this improved model with extra chrome and high gloss black detailing. There's a centre console that's supposed to be styled like a ship's stern and a dash apparently model on the shape of an aircraft wing. The fascia section is decorated with large circular air vents designed to resemble jet engines and which buyers can trim in personalisable colours with that gloss black finish again here. It all sounds very daring and avant-garde but in reality the finished result is actually quite conservative. You could be in any of Audi's larger models with exemplary build quality and a delightful finish to everything you see and touch that's a world away from what you'd find in a Mini. The knurled metal heater controls are particularly smart and above these you might expect to find the kind of centre dash colour infotainment display that's becoming increasingly common in modern super minis. But instead, in an upmarket touch, this is secreted away in a fold out panel on top of the fascia. It doesn't glide up electrically as it would on one of Audi's larger models, but it's still one of the features that makes this cabin feel like that of a much more luxurious car as does the functionality of the 6.5 inch MMI screen. Tick the right options boxes and via this, thanks to Audi Connect technology, you can do everything from updating your Facebook page to checking the news and local fuel prices. You can plan your journey using Google Earth, check out traffic information online, log into thousands of global radio stations and create in your car a Wi-Fi hotspot. Truly, this is motoring in the 21st century. 
with height adjustment for the very comfortable seat and height and reach adjustment for the grippy three-spoke wheel, it's easy to get comfortable. Once you are, you view the usual crystal clear set of Audi instruments, the two cool white illuminated main dials separated on most models by a driver information system that delivers various trip computer readouts as well as efficiency data. As for interior stowage space for smaller items, well, the door pockets remain as small as they always were, but you do get a decently sized glove box, the usual cup holders and a storage area in front of them with coin slots. There's also an extra cost folding centre armrest with a concealed compartment. In fact, you have to pay extra for quite a few of the interior storage features available on this car. Things like a fold-out compartment under the driver's seat, storage pockets in the backs of the front seats, a net in the front passenger footwell, plus three cup holders and a tray for rear seat occupants. Access to the rear in this sportback variant is obviously aided by that longer roof line I mentioned earlier. but you shouldn't get your hopes up too high with regard to the potential space inside. This is, after all, still a super mini measuring under four metres in length, and the wheelbase of this five-door body style remains unchanged from that of the three-door. Still, the designers have certainly made the most of the space available. And thanks not only to that extended roof line, but also to these scalloped cutouts indented into the headlining, there's more headroom than you might be expecting here. 11 millimetres more than you get in the three-door variant and 13 millimetres more shoulder room too. Even so, this still isn't what you call spacious. As standard, all A1 Sportbacks get what Audi ambitiously calls a three-person back seat, complete with a trio of three-point belts, though the A1 three-door model's two-seat bench is optional on some models. The bottom line, though, is that expecting to get three adults into this car for any length of time is a bit ambitious, thanks to the restricted width and a bulky central transmission tunnel that seems a bit superfluous in a front-wheel drive car. Three kids will be fine, though. Expect to pay somewhere in the 15,000 to 20,000 pound bracket for your Audi A1 Sportback, depending on the version you go for and the options you choose. Inevitably, of course, the hot hatch S1 Quattro model is far pricier. The budget required here being just over 26,000 pounds. There's a premium of just over 600 pounds if you want to trade up from the three door to this five door sportback body style. Most models also offer the option of S-Tronic automatic transmission too, for a premium of around 1,500 pounds. As for engine choice, well, if you want a petrol engine A1 and you don't want to spend nearly 17,000 pounds, you're limited to the little entry level one litre TFSI unit, but that'll be no hardship unless you're covering larger mileages. Insist that your dealer allows you to try this clever three-cylinder power plant first before getting you into one of the pokier 1.4-litre petrol models that'll cost you much more as they can't be ordered with entry-level trim. The 1.6-litre TDI diesel version can be, which makes it look a lot of car for around £16,000. If you must have a 1.4-litre TFSI petrol model and you're looking at the top sporty S-Line trim package we've been trying here, then it's probably worth finding the £800 premium Audi asks for its more powerful yet also more efficient cylinder on-demand technology. Just be aware that the 1.4 TFSI COD S-Line model in question requires a hefty £20,000 budget. On to the value proposition all of that represents. You'll be assuming that an A1 will cost you more than an ordinary mainstream badge super mini, say a Fiesta or a Corsa. And to some extent that is of course true. You'll get bigger discounts from the volume brands, of course, and they offer lower tech, more feebly powered petrol and diesel variants that inevitably look much cheaper. Compare like with like, though, say the A1 1 litre TFSI entry level model against super mini rivals with the same three cylinder turbo petrol technology, and the story's a little different. A Volkswagen Polo Blue Motion 1 litre TSI with exactly the same 95 PS engine will actually cost you more than Audi is asking here. And you wouldn't save much against the A1 by opting for directly comparable superminis like Ford's Fiesta 1 litre EcoBoost or Vauxhall's Corsa 1 litre direct injection turbo. 
Surprised? I was. In reality, though, few real-life A1 buyers tend to have volume brand alternatives on their shopping lists. These are people wanting something a bit nicer than that. They'd maybe like a prestigiously badged compact hatch like BMW's 1 Series, the Mercedes A-Class or Audi's own A3, but they don't necessarily need something focus-sized and they don't want to pay over £20,000 for it. For them, this sportier, more compact and more affordable little A1 might well be just about perfect. And it's a formula that isn't really replicated in quite the same way by any other brand. If you do want an option to compare against, then five-door versions of the Mini Hatch most obviously provide it. Cars that in Cooper form look good value against 1.4-litre petrol-powered A1s. Bear in mind, though, that in Cooper D diesel, guys, the BMW-made product will set you back over £1,000 more than the direct A1 1.6 TDI alternative. At petrol entry level, Audi also holds the advantage. An A1 1-litre TFSI priced directly against a comparable Mini 1, yet proving to be significantly less costly to run. Are there other direct alternatives? Well, not many if you want either a premium badge or a premium feel as part of the deal with your small compact hatch. Alfa Romeo's Mito and Citroën's DS3 are both possible options. A Mito with two-cylinder twin-air power is a decent and slightly cheaper, though much noisier, alternative to an A1 1-litre TFSI. The main issue, though, is that neither Alfa or Citroën will offer you a five-door body style. And incidentally, if you want a Mito or DS3 diesel variant able to match the performance of a 1.6 TDI, then you'll need to find two to £3,000 more for it. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is an A1 that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Audi has been with the standard spec. And the answer is that most of the main features you'll need are included. So even with baseline SE trim, you get alloy wheels of at least 15 inches in size, plus heat insulating glass, powered front windows and mirrors, remote locking and a Thatcham Category 1 alarm. Inside, you'll find air conditioning, a three-spoke sports steering wheel and a height-adjustable driver's seat. Most importantly, perhaps, there's a 6.5-inch MMI infotainment display screen from which you can access a DAB radio, a six-speaker CD stereo system and connect in via an aux-in socket or an SD card reader. Is it worth finding the extra couple of thousand to graduate from this level to mid-range sport trim? Perhaps. This is, after all, the point from which 1.4-litre petrol and 1.6-litre diesel A1 buyers get the desirable Audi Drive Select system that enables you to tweak the throttle response and steering feel to suit the mood you're in and the road you're on. Gear change timings, too, if you've opted to pay extra for S-Tronic auto transmission. Sport trim also gets you front fog lights, larger 16-inch wheels and polished tailpipes. Inside, the interior is lifted with various aluminium highlights and gloss black trim for the air vents. Plus, you'll be entitled to a leather-trimmed multifunction steering wheel, sports seats, a driver information system trip computer and Bluetooth compatibility for your phone. Sports spec A1s also feature firmer sports suspension, but a word with your Audi salesperson will see you able to deselect this feature if you wish in favour of the standard, softer, dynamic setup that's far better suited to our appalling roads. We'd do exactly that. Of course, you can go a lot further than that, either by opting for the plushest S-line trim level that we've been trying here or by perusing the lengthy options list. Many A1 buyers will be doing both. S-Line level gives you that firmed-up sports suspension setup, plus Xenon headlamps with LED daytime running lights and LED rear lights, even larger 17-inch alloy wheels, special S-Line exterior styling and interior detailing, and leather and cloth combination upholstery. Beyond that, just as with the Mini, there's a huge options list from which you can personalise your car. Let's start with the aesthetics. Buyers of this five-door sport map model must have a more restrained look than would be possible with a three-door body style, but they can still order a contrasting coloured roof. If you want to go further, there are numerous vivid paint and trim combinations, even quattro ratty style decals. Some of the gaudier options, though, particularly the brighter interior trim packages, will make your A1 difficult to sell on. 
Less controversial extras include leather trim, climate control, keyless entry, an acoustic rear parking system and a thumping 14-speaker, 465-watt Bose audio setup. We'd also want the Audi phone box option that can connect your smartphone handset into the car aerial for better reception. And the optional luggage package, which features divided storage compartments under the loading floor. If you're a keen driver, you'll also want to consider the adaptive damping system that enables you to set up the suspension to suit the road you're on via the auto and dynamic modes of the drive select system. You might need this option too if you specify the largest 17 or 18 inch alloy wheels as they really firm up the ride. Before going too far with niceties of that sort though, we'd want to look at the Tech Pack that includes a higher resolution colour infotainment display via which you can access an MMI navigation plus sat nav system linked to a 40 gigabyte hard drive. Plus there's the Audi Music interface that allows you to connect iPods, iPads and iPhones into the stereo system. Best of all, Tech Pack customers now get all the benefits of the Audi Connect multimedia setup that can bring a whole range of internet-based services into your car. This is a system that allows you to stay fully networked on the move, giving you everything from weather information to news online, parking info and fuel prices. There's online media streaming that allows you to connect into thousands of global radio stations, a traffic information online setup that warns you of impending queues, and the opportunity to create in your car a Wi-Fi hotspot into which you can connect your mobile devices. You'll also be able to navigate using Google Earth and Google Street View and plan your trip in advance via Google Maps on your PC, then forward directions to your car. Away from infotainment, it's also worth considering the design pack that gives you privacy glass, an LED interior light pack, power folding mirrors and a panoramic sunroof. Or the comfort pack that gives you cruise control, auto headlamps and wipers, plus useful active driving safety features like an auto dimming rear view mirror and high beam assist headlights that automatically dip themselves at night in the face of oncoming traffic. Beyond this, though, there's a surprising absence of the kind of optional camera-based safety features that some of today's smarter super minis are beginning to offer at extra cost. Things like collision avoidance and lane departure warning systems. Still, you do get a clever secondary collision brake assist feature, a standard across the range, there to automatically brake the car after an impact to make sure you don't go on to hit something else. Talking of braking, if you slam on the anchors and activate the ABS system, there's a brake assist setup to reduce your stopping distance and the advantage of automatically activating hazard flashers to warn motorists following behind. Otherwise, the standard safety provision runs to the usual expected things. Though you'll have to pay extra if you want a proper spare wheel rather than one of those fiddly tyre repair kits. And you only get a hill holder clutch that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions if you opt for the S-Tronic Auto gearbox. All A1s do, though, come with Isofix child seat fastenings, tyre pressure monitoring and twin front, side and curtain airbags. Plus, there's an ESC stability control system that now has an interim sport setting that relaxes intervention a little when you're in a sporty mood. Audi has certainly gone the extra mile to keep this A1 at the efficiency forefront of the Super Mini segment. You get a stop-start system, of course, to cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. And it'll help that this improved model's drag factor is slightly more slippery at 0.31 CD. Buyers get the option of one of the lightest auto gearboxes in the world the compact 7-speed S-Tronic unit weighing only 70 kilos. And they have the chance to specify a drive select system, offering an eco-conscious efficiency setting that focuses all of the car's systems on saving energy, tweaking the air conditioning, softening the throttle response, and altering gear shift timings on S-Tronic automatic models. There's also a useful efficiency program in the driver information system trip computer on the dash. The key changes with this improved A1 model lineup, though, lie under the bonnet. 
All the engines on offer combine fuel injection and turbocharging, and all are either new or fundamentally redesigned to meet Euro 6 emission standards, with fuel economy improved by up to 10% across the board, despite increasing both power and torque. This is thanks to updates that include lower friction internal parts, better thermal efficiency, and the addition of electromechanical power steering. And of course, the addition of a completely new engine at the bottom of the range, the company's very first three-cylinder petrol power plant. A 999cc unit weighing just 88 kilos, but punching firmly above its weight when it comes to performance. Despite that, the running costs of the 1-litre TFSI variant in question look promising. Manual models delivering 67.3 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 97 grams per kilometre of CO2. Figures that fall only marginally to 64.2 miles per gallon, 102 grams per kilometre if you opt for S-Tronic automatic transmission. It might be enough to make some buyers think twice about stretching up to the 1.6 litre TDI diesel variant, though that does still hold a significant running cost advantage thanks to substantial improvements when it comes to fuel and CO2 returns. This version now goes around six miles further on the combined cycle, registering 80.7 miles per gallon. It's also seven grams per kilometre cleaner than before, the CO2 figure improving to 92 grams per kilometre. As with the one litre model, there's a penalty of around 5% if you opt for auto transmission. And as with any car, remember that you'll take a further hit if you specify larger wheels. Otherwise, for A1 buyers, it's a question of choosing between the two 1.4 litre TFSI petrol models. The standard 125 PS unit delivers 57.6 miles per gallon and 115 grams per kilometre in manual guise, but if you were looking at a high-spec variant of that car, it's also worth checking out the very clever 150 PS 1.4 TFSI COD petrol version. Here, high-tech cylinder-on-demand technology sees this four-cylinder engine running on only two cylinders at low to mid throttle speeds, something Audi claims will cut fuel costs by up to 20% if matched with a moderate driving style. Official figures suggest that an A1 fueled by COD technology will manage a combined cycle figure of 58.9 miles per gallon and 111 grams per kilometre, readings you can almost exactly duplicate even with the Estronic Auto gearbox fitted. Uh, for completion, I'll also give you the returns achievable by the S1 Quattro hot hatch variant. Around 40 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and just over 160 grams per kilometre of CO2. Figures that are almost identical to those of Audi's larger S3 model. Which isn't surprising since apart from a software tweak, the two cars share exactly the same engine. Are these returns class competitive? Well, that depends on your perspective. True, you would get seven or eight miles more from every gallon while putting out around 15% less CO2 in a similar size Ford Fiesta ST, a Peugeot 208 GTI, or a Mini Cooper S. But then these are less powerful two-wheel drive models. They're also cars that will depreciate much more heavily. What else? Well, as usual with Audis, low benefit in kind taxation ratings will be a major draw for company buyers, as will the fact that depreciation remains class-leadingly slow, which means that as long as you can afford the initial outlay and don't go mad on the options list, this A1 is probably going to work out as cheap, if not cheaper, than almost anything you can consider in the Super Mini segment. Further assistance here is provided by the affordable Audi Complete service and maintenance packages that can take care of all your service and maintenance needs. And optionally, your tyre needs as well for up to three years. Plus, there's a choice of either long life or fixed inspection servicing regimes, depending on whether you plan to cover either more or less than 10,000 miles a year. On to the warranty, which covers you for unlimited mileage in the first two years of ownership and for up to 60,000 miles in year three. It's possible to extend this cover into four years, 75,000 mile, or five year, 90,000 mile packages at extra cost. That only leaves insurance groupings. To give you an idea here, I'll tell you that the 1.6 litre diesel is rated at group 19E. The 1.4 TFSI 125 PS model is rated at Group 21E. The 1.4 TFSI 150 COD variant is rated at Group 25E. And the S1 hot hatch model is rated at Group 33E.
If the three-door A1 offers all the essence of Audi in smaller form, and it does, then what of this A1 Sportback? Still small, but usefully more versatile. It's a little urban jewel. Trendy if you want it to be, restrained and low-key if you don't. It can come power-packed or frugally focused. It can break high-tech boundaries or be supplied in a form that won't break the bank. Inevitably, though, to experience much of what this car has to offer, you have to spend more than you might ever have expected to on a car of this size. So, is it worth it? Well, that's the question which, for us, is easier to answer with this model in Sportback guise. It's a beautifully balanced design that, from first glance, seems immediately more comfortable with a premium price tag. In fact, we'd go as far as to say that it's a car that makes more sense the more you spend on it, provided you know what you're buying. That's key to the whole different mindset you need in approaching the purchase of this A1. After all, on paper, you could get much of the same technology and a cheaper Volkswagen Polo, or indeed an even less expensive Skoda Fabia. Fortunately, though, for Audi, cars of this kind aren't solely bought on paper. No, you'll be considering this the most expensive super mini on the market because you've just been that little bit seduced by Audi's branding and image. Nothing wrong with that, of course. A Casio tells us time just as well as a Rolex, but sometimes, well, let's be honest, we just want nice things. Particularly if long-term running cost savings are likely to repay the premium paid up front. This car does, after all, deliver best-in-class figures for benefiting kind taxation, overall running costs and residual value, helped by the fact that thanks to the most recent engine revisions, its economy and CO2 emission figures are now right up with the Super Mini segment leaders. So it seems that small can be beautiful, to head as well as heart. Five does indeed go into one. And Audi, once again, has maintained an advantage over its premium rivals.